As we continue our series, Earth on the Edge, we have perspective from a place that could be the most important place on the globe when it comes to climate change. We're talking about Greenland. David Ono joins us now with an unprecedented opportunity to see up close so we can better understand what is happening to our planet. This story will give you some clarity on why things are getting so bad so quickly. We travel to the top of the world to not only observe, but actually take part in a study with JPL. Nuke Greenland is where we get an up-close look at our melting polar ice caps. In this episode, we call View from the Top. It's one of the most important cities on Earth, yet only 19,000 people live here. This is Nuke, the capital of Greenland. It's where you come if you really want to understand what's happening to our world. You've heard it many times. We are in trouble. But let me actually show you why. I came here to take part in a mission with Josh Willis and crew from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, some of the most accomplished climate scientists on the planet. It's the very last day of a years-long project called Oceans Melting Greenland, or OMG. It's been six years since we've been flying around Greenland, and it's really dominated my life for that entire time. We're trying to measure how the oceans are changing from one year to the next, and how the ice here is changing in response to the oceans. So Oceans Melting Greenland is about exactly that, how the oceans are eating away at the ice here. Thanks to Josh's six years of hard work, we now know a lot more about how our polar ice caps are melting. The mission takes place on a beautiful World War II era plane that is now loaded with state-of-the-art research equipment. Here we go. I buckle in and we take off. Josh and Ian McCubbin go to work. They have studied over 200 glaciers in Greenland and today I get to see one up close. But in the plane, we can fly right over the icebergs and drop right into the water. As we approach our target zone, we are given an opportunity to absorb the beauty of the moment. It's a view so few are privileged to see. As we get closer to the glacier, I'm first amazed at the ice flows, freshly broken off icebergs working their way to the open sea. A white thing floating in the middle, it looks like a chunk of it. The pilot invites us into the cockpit as we approach. And there it is. It's remarkable. You're looking at the face of a majestic glacier that is several hundred feet tall. And it's right here where this frozen behemoth meets the water that is vitally important to our climate crisis. This one will be a channel 12. Channel 12, copy. From the plane, we're going to be dropping probes into the water. These probes that we push out of the plane, they actually fall through the water and they measure the temperature, not just at the surface, but at each level all the way down to the sea floor. Through precision flying by the pilot and timing from the crew, I'm allowed to take part in actually doing the launch. And uh, you just hold on to it for a minute. I'm standing at the ready by the tube and on their mark, I let it go. Drop, drop, drop. It hits the water and slowly sinks, sending in data immediately. McCubbin records every digit. Okay, now we're getting a depth right there, so reading 16 meters. This is something they have done hundreds of times all over Greenland. It's within those numbers that we find the truth. Well, climate change is inescapable. It affects everyone around the world. We are learning more about it from scientists all the time. It's one of the reasons why we're here in Greenland to understand it better. Back on the ground, I talk with Mr. John Moore with the State Department. This is a study so important, he flew all the way here on this last day to witness what's happening and learn as much as possible. It was a tremendous opportunity to see with my own eyes the nature of the situation here in Greenland, including the melt of the ice cap. Weeks later, I meet with Willis at JPL in Pasadena after he's had time to study his findings. As expected, the news isn't good, but now there's clarity in what's actually happening. OMG has really revolutionized our understanding of how the ice sheet is going to melt. Before we thought of it as melting from above with the air warming, but now we know it's a lot more dynamic than that. Remember those probes we sent out? They've taught us that it's not the air, it's the water. The glaciers are melting from underneath. And what we're really seeing is that the oceans are playing a huge role in eating away that ice. The oceans, because they store over 90% of the heat that we trap with the greenhouse gases, they're warming. And that warmer water is gonna have a bigger and bigger impact on the glaciers. 
What happens in Greenland lands at our doorstep. Our oceans are rising far faster than we ever expected. That means high tides and storm surges will be exponentially worse. Property losses, beach erosion, but there's far more to it than that. The oceans are controlling our climate. The air is just reacting to whatever the oceans do. Our rising ocean temperatures are changing our weather patterns. Droughts, floods, hurricanes, blizzards. The bottom line is, when you first heard about climate change 10, 20, maybe 30 years ago, and thought there was time, there's not. The more we learn, the more we realize we were wrong. So what's really scary is with each passing year, the pace of the melt is getting faster. And if just Greenland's ice melts, our seas would rise 25 feet. Globally, that would wipe out communities for hundreds of millions of people. So people always want to know, well, how fast is it melting? Mm -hmm. and it's just impossible to answer that question. Every year is a little bit different, but it's still scary what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's exponentially faster than we ever expected. And so All many your, beach communities and, and yeah. uh, coastal communities here in Southern California. That would that, be that's the big question is, if you live on the beach, what do you do? Mm -hmm. If you want to invest in a retirement home on a beach community, yeah. should you? Mm -hmm. And because what is the goal here? What, how long is it going to take before we lose these communities? We just don't know. Yeah. All of your stories are so educational and so enlightening. But this one, I think, in particular, really drives the point home. Yeah. So thank Perfect. you. Thank you.